Okay, we are back. Absolutely, we are back. Welcome back to everybody who have been watching. A little show. louder, Raja. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay now. You, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, no. okay. Yeah. So welcome to everybody, all of our friends who have been watching our chat shows. And uh, so for quite a while, we, we talked about, you know, the transcendence of uh, Chakra Tirtha to Spirit Spiral Healing, the, the, you know, how the structures changed over the years and how, uh, how it traveled. So now my question is basically that uh, what is the current structure? What, how, how, do you, how do you convey spirit spiral healing to the people uh, in the present days? What is the structure of it uh, as of now? Would you like me to answer now? Briefly? Yes. 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 Uh, well, uh, talking of the structure, uh, mm -hmm. It is structured as a healing service. Right. And by healing service, what I mean is uh, a facilitation service for the client right. to find their way to a more whole and wholesome life. Right. Which means... And, uh... Yeah. discovering along the way so it is in in a sense a journey that i accompany the client on a part of right it's a voyage of self discovery for the client right and uh, i'm guessing that it uh, it is not a very conventional uh... You know the conventional therapy sessions that uh, people talk about. I'm 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 guessing it's not uh, exactly that. No, it is not at all that. In fact, it is quite okay. away from that. All right, all right. How because so? unlike the conventional that? therapy session, first of all, mm -hmm. words like uh, like therapy, counseling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. words which uh, uh, which. Uh, Put, you know, which indicate that the client is in a situation of need. Right, right. And that need is being served by another person. Right. Right. I am moving away from that narrative. Okay, okay. So I, uh, I don't say many, I, I do know that many enlightened therapists and uh, counselors do take that approach. They go beyond the limitations of, uh, you know, what they are um, of the structured approach and they try to free themselves and the client from structures. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I just take this to the next level and at the same time I recognize that uh, when freeing someone from structures, they need a level of support and a level of protection. Definitely. Also, video, please. Your video yes. is turned off. <laughs> yes, I know. It is really proving very challenging. And I'll yeah. have to look into some technical issues to see where this, where, how just how this challenge crept in from January, whereas it was not bothering me in December. <laughs> We'll so, some like 2023 <laughs> jinx. But anyway, please continue. Anyways, yeah. Uh, and slightly louder, Roger. Yeah. So would you would you like to elaborate uh, about how exactly do you proceed uh, from, you know, from a normal person coming to you asking for help and then how does that person become your client or how that person eventually gets you know uh gets on the journey that you that you lead them on or uh, that you put them on i don't put How them does... on a journey all right they choose right. their journey they choose their they journey. are often already okay. on a journey which they are not aware of 
Right. So what do I do? Okay. I so how does this entire process work? Uh, well, the process okay. is, is very simple, really. It is that I hmm. uh, I make myself emotionally more available to a client than a therapist would. At the same time, right. I don't bring my emotions as in my connection with my emotions. I don't bring those up front. Right. I am entangled in my own emotions. I am healing also. You see, uh, the, principle of the principle of never not healing is very important here. And I right. think we right. had these conversations in earlier shows also about this. With yes. you and with Sri Devi about that state of taking ourselves apart. And when we take ourselves apart, we need to be in the presence of, you know, like when you give your car to a mechanic, for instance, mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. or, uh, for any kind of repairs or overhauling or whatever. There are, there are some situations I have had my car taken apart completely. I have a vintage car that goes back to 1960. And uh, that car is never not healing, so to say. And it is, you know, the classic example of this. And uh, and uh, there will always be something or other which will, and I'm not going to use the word fixing. I'm going to use the word healing. Because right. we tune in, you know, when, when a car is ours, we have a kind of synchronicity with the rhythm and the spirit of the car. The car actually has a spirit, which it takes from you. Yes. Everything you yes. use, your computer, it's, there is a spirit there. Because I believe everything, whether, you know, whether sentient or not, it is imbued with spirit. And that is perhaps yes. the mystery and mystique of spirit because people ask what is spirit and I don't think we have clear answers as yet. But that perhaps okay. is what is spirit. If I feel that connection with my car, mm -hmm. then I take it my car feels that connection with me and I have seen it, you know, as in the car cooperating with some drivers and not with other drivers. And I would clearly say she doesn't like that driver. She likes this driver. She doesn't mind even if this driver treats her a bit roughly. Even though she's used to very gentle treatment. So, you know, you when, when your car is taken apart, or even when you give your car to a driver to drive, there is a kind of trust there. Yes. Yes. There is a very Definitely. major factor of trust. And yes. you may not be the one who is always competent to take your car apart. At the same time, right. you may be like me, quite invested in the process of taking the car apart. At the same okay. time, I will not give it to just anybody at all to take apart. Absolutely. So you Absolutely. feel even if I were to take the car apart to find out what is mm -hmm. wrong, I might like a person because I am not really very, I am not a car mechanic. I might like, I might like to do this job myself and I would encourage people to do this job themselves if they can, but at the same time, have a person with them whom they can trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think what I want to do, maybe not with a car, maybe there are only limited things you can do with a car, but think about yourself. I can't really get under your skin to know what you want to do with, with yourself. I may be able to take a car apart and figure out what, what, not what the car, the car does not have free will, but I may take the car apart to figure out what I need the car to do. Similarly, you, the client, might like to take yourself apart radical as that sounds to figure out what you figure out to come closer to what you actually want to do with those parts of yourself. Yes. And sometimes you have to have the yes. courage to take those parts of yourself apart 
or to recognize which parts of yourself maybe need to be rearranged, shifted, given a little more care, shown a little more compassion. And maybe you need a person with you whom you trust. So the first principle here is, do you trust me? Why have you come to me at all? Why have you even, right. how did you find me? You find me naturally right. because I have a channel. I want you to find me because I am confident that you could need me as I need you. Yes. And I need yes. you or I need you to keep my creativity fueled. I also Absolutely. need you to help me fill my stomach. And I say this with all humility. Because we all need That's something, true. someone, That's some true. material resource. I Nobody Absolutely. can spurn the material because we are made of material. Absolutely. Whether it's your car Absolutely. or it's you, there's a body that needs, mm -hmm. needs, to, needs nourishment. There is equally a spirit that needs nourishment. And... If you are looking for greater wholeness, you, right. the client, are looking for greater wholeness, there's something you're missing. Naturally, there's something that makes you restless or, or, to, or you know, makes you feel incomplete, makes you feel a lack, makes you feel you can be better. This is not the best version of yourself. And mostly it, it shows up to you not as this is not the best version of myself, but it shows up to you as a discontent with your life. Because your life is actually a mirror of yourself. Yes, it is. And maybe the first thing I guide you to do is to hold up some different mirrors there and look at yourself in them which means you are making slight shifts. And I say, now were you to look at yourself in this mirror, and I'm talking in metaphors, but when it comes to the actual case of the client, there would be definitely an example, as in I have got, I the client have got it into my head that I want to teach English. But when, and you, I the client am somehow unable to go forward in my chosen aspiration to teach English. Somewhere I find I am not succeeding. Somewhere I find I am stuck. I have a block. So what, yes. what, does, what does that client do? I, the client, I go to Chakra Incognita. Because I feel that Chakra, I have seen the way, I've seen Chakra Incognita's channels, I've uh, channel, I've seen her blogs, I have encountered her through various social circles and networks. And there you see it is very important to be networked, which is why I repeatedly appeal to people to spread the word around because somebody somewhere needs me and I need that person. And Definitely. how do we make that connection? Definitely. We can't make that connection if people don't spread the word. Yes. And yes. people people are in, in something which involves um, intangibles, such as what you are searching for and what I am offering. I think we need exactly. people more than any standardized process of advertisement. That is true. That is true. I believe that is true. So when many uh, people tell me, even with Chakra Tirtha Travels, why don't you mm -hmm. advertise like this and advertise like that? The moment you mm -hmm. advertise like this or that, you are following a format. A format. You're following yes. a preset format. On the yes. other hand, when people talk about you, you are different things to different people. And the more people yes. talk about you, the more different aspects of yourself come to the you notice uncover. of other yes. people, known to those people. Right. Which is why I say, I say the social network is so important. And which is why I repeatedly say it is only as toxic as we make it. We can always use it for good. Definitely. Definitely. 
definitely and instead so. of wasting our time on it we can really mm. use it for good i mean i tell absolutely people, i tell people if you have 2 minutes i mean why mm. are you wasting those 2 minutes posting the same meme about some politician you could you could just stop for those 5 minutes and make a little post about me your friend whom you are so fond of and somewhere along the way you miss out the fact that i could be needing you just so that i can go from today to tomorrow that's definitely and true. there are many more of us who are on the verge of of giving up on crossing the threshold to the next day yes and i'm being yes. very candid and very forthright about this that if you talk to mm-hmm. me about healing i have to be very honest about this also in my own case i mean if somebody asks me why are you unwell with this that and the other well why mm-hmm. wouldn't i be unwell with this that and the other when i am so uncertain about whether i am going to get up tomorrow morning in a state of wholeness or i'm going to get up tomorrow morning with a challenge i am not able to meet yes that's that 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 is something that always remains and i would right. say that if in spite of you may not know what my challenge is my challenge mm-hmm. may be much bigger much tougher than anything i show to you and so exactly. to the case of the client yes you don't know what the smiling face is hiding you don't exactly. know what the meme about the chief minister or the prime minister is actually concealing so when i see this compulsive repetitive behavior on social media also i say what is beneath it why this uncreative pattern right what is missing in your life that you are doing this instead of channeling this time or energy or bandwidth all three are going your bandwidth is going Mm-hmm. your time is going your energy is going and then you're answering all those silly comments that come on your post and i keep asking i keep asking myself do these people not have a day job this i mean some people biggest. some people accuse me of making about 20 meaningful posts in a day asking where i have time to make 20 meaningful posts I think if I got two clients in a day I would not be making those 20 meaningful posts I might be making four or five of those meaningful posts and channeling some of that meaning towards helping some client as well as helping myself you see it's it's in Definitely. the air when I post it on my wall it's in the air when I direct it into the ears yes. of a client it is being directed with specificity towards the challenges that a real person is facing in real life yes it becomes more uh, intimate so, Jay, your voice is personal. cracking your voice is cracking okay okay we are okay. Uh, is it yeah it is still yeah. cracking okay at least somebody has a problem is besides it? me is it is it all right it, it's still cracking and this time 